This video was brought to you by Elbilmerk, a bedroom planner, storing by Ken Power and Bill Componenter. Yo, what's up? Today we're going to do a proper Sunday drive because it is Sunday today. And you know, the Tesla Model 3 long range I tested a couple of years ago, that was the very first Sunday drive I took. Uh, I'm not sure what I call it back then, but uh, it drove around 650 kilometers. Uh, I had a slightly different test uh, procedure back then. I drove a little bit faster and stuff. Don't remember what the heck I did. Uh, but uh, I believe that the new Highland here can go way over that, uh, possibly over 700 kilometers. That is almost unheard of for a car in this price range. So let's find out, can we go that far, huh? How efficient is this beast from the east? Yeah, it is actually a beast from the east. If it's LRW, then that is from Shanghai. So that's the LG battery. So I prepared the car, charged it 100%. Um, it's got my Tesla, reports 100% here. 74.6 kilowatt hour use will remain in. Hmm, okay. So uh, we will see. Uh, I will just take this route here, normal route, and then based on the consumption, I can decide. If I go from, uh, let me see, Ringebu is roughly here. I can take a loop here that is around 500 km, most likely not. I can then a longer route that is 600 km, or I can take a route that is 700 km by going via Dumbos. So let's just get going. All right. Oh, look at that. The leaves are turning yellow. Yeah, summer is over, winter is coming. Oh, shit. Prepare yourself for some cold gate. Now, brace yourself for cold gating in uh, any other brand than Tesla. <laughs> because Tesla kicks ass for the Lord. Yeah, Elon Musk kicks ass. But um, yeah, now we're just cruising at 80 kilometers per hour. And see, this is actually a disadvantage for Tesla because it's 78 kilometers per hour in GPS. Tesla has very accurate uh, speedometer, unlike most other cars. Other cars will be cruising at 77, some cars even at 76. But despite that, we have 118 watt hour per kilometer. Wow, and we have even gained some elevation here. Okay, we'll see then. Uh, usually around Lillehammer or Jövik, we'll get an, an impression of what the consumption will be. We are now in Jövik and over here the elevation is roughly the same as Yesheim and the consumption is oh, oh, 112 watt hour per kilometer. So even though we have been driving without any HVAC on, you know, no fans, because it was so uh, somewhat cold, only yeah, around 10, 11 degrees Celsius, then the consumption is not as low as I was hoping for. So estimated range now is around 680 kilometers. Ooh. Okay, uh, seems like 700 is not possible then. Ah, shit. But okay, it's still good enough, but uh, the Raven Drive is more efficient. Uh, almost 10 watt hour per kilometer more efficient. Well, no, no, no. It was warmer on that ground, yeah. Yeah, that's the problem. We are now in mid September, so this is uh, the best weather we can get nowadays. So, also, wind over here. Uh, seems to be quite low but remember that this car has good aerodynamics so it just slices through the air like swiss cheese through butter
we are now at Otta and you know, normally, oh, oh that's pretty cool. There are, I don't know if you see it, uh, how to zoom. There are, the two rivers are uh, meeting up and uh, they, they, they mix the colors. <laughs> but okay, so normally I would go left here and then go towards Wogamu. If I go the, the loop via the, the other mountain there, you know, uh, Wallestreya. But this time we still have to go, keep going all the way to Dumbos, actually beyond Dumbos. So yeah, this is one of the longer loops we have now. Yeah, here is Utta. It's like, yeah, here's Utta, and then, yeah, and then we just passed Utta. <laughs> just a small place. So yeah, the consumption so far is 110 watt hour per kilometer, despite that we have been going uphill, but we have tailwind so far. So yeah, no, oh, I'm not being strict on the speed limit here. But the Tesla Autoply Pilot, man, it is king. It is so good, it is smooth, it's not doing any jerky movements. Uh, it locks on to the lane. Uh, it's, it's the best in the industry. Yes, that's what I'm saying. Okay, go. Now we speed up. Oh, now we just enjoy the ride. It's 16 degrees Celsius outside. And we still have 62% left and we are done now. 260 kilometers. Yeah, I had a little stop at Lillehamme. And that's why this is different than that. We are now at uh, Yashkin. This is going to be the turnaround point. But just look, I can do the pin zoom. There's nothing wrong with my fingers. And it, it goes so smooth, unlike in the x -Bang. Yeah. But yeah, you see, we are really far north here. So, so far, 118 watt hour per kilometer. Wow. And then let me check elevation. I have an app here. Look, okay. We are at one. 1046 meter of sea level and we have that low consumption Ooh. and look even at over a thousand meter of sea level tesla they built v3 supercharger here there is a frisk motel there's a restaurant here uh and then yeah <laughs> see there we have some other chargers and the main road goes there and then here, I think there's some, yeah, it's a visiting center for, for wild rain, reindeer. And you can see musken, the musk, musk ox safari here. So there are lots of stuff to do here for people who are interested, for me. I think I'm just going to go to the restroom and then we proceed. Man, this is really a beast how far I can drive. Wow, the road over here is kind of bumpy. Seems like it hasn't been maintained for a long time. So, no problem with the Highland because it has superb suspension. Like the earlier models uh, of Model 3 that came out in 2019 was so hard, especially Model 3 performance. But now with Highland, they soften up everything. Uh, they are, Tesla, they put a lot of work in getting nice and comfortable, but still sporty ride. So I don't know how they do it, but it just, it's not active suspension, but they just tune it so that uh, the car doesn't dip too much up and down and also smaller bumps are, are even out with faster movement on the suspension. Uh, so it's like magic. It's like you're sitting in a German car with German comfort, but it's American, yeah.
we just passed Arudal and uh, the weather is nice over here. 17 degrees Celsius. Wow, sunny. So that's good for uh, consumption. We are now at 111 watt hour per kilometer, but we have to go downhill. But the wind is blowing this direction. We have, have to now face the headwind. So what's it going to be? What will the consumption be? Will it drop or will it rise? Well, we shall find out. So the car estimates that we can reach yes home with 2% left. Oh yeah, okay, then the loop was not 700 kilometers, it's 670 kilometers, but that's pretty far also. Oh, this is really nice, you see. Uh, we are in, a, in an average speed zone now, and the car shows you the average speed in the zone, and then also how many kilometers are left. So this is very useful because when I'm coasting, I'm going over the speed limit, then I know what my average speed is, so I don't uh, get a ticket. Well, actually, Tesla doesn't, didn't get a ticket. I mean, not a ticket, a taxation, yeah. We are now uh, 166 kilometers away from Yes Home, and the consumption has dropped to 108 watt hour per kilometer. Oh, it might even drop more now. We have slight downhill, so it seems like this car is not affected by the headwind that much, but it gains on the downhills. Look here, for the past 50 kilometers, we averaged 90 watt hour per kilometer. This is simply amazing. Can we go 700? Oh, we have to see. Look over here. There are solar panels being set up here. There's a solar panel farm, maybe hard to see. But uh, these panels seem to be at around 45 degrees angle. Yeah, would almost make sense to make vertical panels here, right? But solar panels so far up north, a solar panel farm, really? Okay, now I've seen it all. Well, we're getting close to Swingen, and as usual, we're gonna hop out with Swingen, yes. And I have a bunch of cars behind me. We need to count again. จะนับหนูนะกี่คันครับหนึ่งสองสามคนในเวียมันขี้คันแซงอ่ะสี่ชอบขับช้าเหมือนผมแล้วห้าบอกบอกเดี๋ยวลูกก็หกแล้วก็
consumption is 109 watt hour per kilometer and we have two percent left there is a slight power limit here and we actually have yeah because there's more stats here 161 kilowatt power limit 1.6 percent left 1.2 kilowatt hour left and here you see that we have consumed 74.3 wow we can get more than 75 kilowatt hour impressive okay let's get over there and finish this oh yeah we are back home in the garage and we drove 696 kilometers and then well okay this is what uh, the car shows right 108 watt hour per kilometer wow and then here according to scammer tesla okay it was yeah it was uh, minus 0 1.1 whatever then we've been camping here a little bit but we managed to pull 75.6 kilowatt hour and then there is actually 0.1 kilowatt hour station there but normally we don't count that so this is what we count then and then here it reports slightly different but yeah six, whoa that is amazing man that this car can go almost 700 kilometers the poor man's tesla yeah all right we're charging now so yeah it's okay to go deep as long as you plug it in right away and start charging so then you don't degrade the battery damage the battery too much but um interesting here i noticed that uh, okay the battery throughout the test was hovering around 30 degrees celsius but now you see that inlet drops and you can hear the slight humming so as soon as we started driving i sorry started charging the inlet is lower which means that the car is actually trying to cool down the battery Huh. So what I should do is just to fire up the H1 because then it will scavenge the heat and then heat up the cabin instead. So if we look at this now, okay, um, the previous test was done uh, two years ago, roughly, well, two and a half years ago. And yeah, I always thought that the consumption was a bit higher, but uh, you know, with the new test regime, this is what we should get compared to other cars we tested recently. So um, now it comes in a good uh, fourth place, but also you see that um, uh, the consumption on the other cars, they are naturally higher. Even the ID7 was amazingly low, but not nowhere as low as Tesla. So it's all about efficiency. This is why the Tesla can go so far because it is super efficient. But also you have the comfort, you have the features, the power, overdrive. drive you know, it is the best bang for the buck in this price range. Really good, man. It's like, could almost match EQS. Well, okay, well, EQS is a lot more expensive and has a bigger battery. But uh, I mean, this test is all about efficiency and range. And then this car really shines because Tesla kicks ass for the Lord. Okay, anyway, I think that's gonna be it for now. Hope you guys enjoyed this video. As always, thank you for watching and talk to you later.